Raven's heir. <laughs> Soon as one of them's caught, another one takes his place. Hey, Harold, have you read this? Harold? Harold? Harold, you hear me? This is no time for fun and games. Shh! Calm down. Oh, I'm a copper. We're on the same side. A copper? What are you doing here? And where's Harold? Harold? Well, there's another guard back there unconscious. That's probably him. The Eye of the Sphinx. Where is it? It's there. Oh, good. Then he hasn't got it yet. You mean... the Raven's heir? Shh! Turn it off! He's gonna steal the eye. But... how do you know? Doesn't matter. All that matters is that we catch him, do you understand? Yeah, but... Do you understand? You and me, mate, we'll be heroes. All right, now, we just have to... What? Halt! Stop! You're under arrest! I don't have time to play. I'm on duty. Haha, mm. <laughs> you're funny. But you don't look like a real cop. You don't even have a revolver.
What's your name, boy? My name is Matthew Miller. And where are you from, Matthew Miller? From Dillsburg, Pennsylvania. But my mom and I live in England now. She's taking care of some rich old lady. We're on our way to Venice at the moment. We're taking a cruise on a big ship. Impressive. You've already seen half the world. I've spent my entire life in Switzerland. Must be really boring. And what's with the gun? What do you need it for? It's the Raven. He was gunned down, so now I need a pistol. Dead birds don't need guns. Nor do live ones. You don't know who the Raven is, do you? He's the greatest burglar ever. He stole paintings from the Louvre, and those priceless eggs with gold and diamonds and stuff. And Bobby Dobbs says he replaced the crown jewels with rhinestones. I know who the Raven was. Although, I don't quite buy that bit about the crown jewels. You do know, these days, there are thieves far more dangerous than your old raven. Two days ago, a precious ruby was stolen from the British Museum. There was an explosion. A guard was severely injured. Really? Yeah. And do you know what the papers say? <clears throat> you talk too much, Constable. Zellner, monsieur. Anton Jakob Zellner. Or did he pull a gun on you? No, monsieur. Get a move on. Inspector Legrand, it's a great honor to work with a celebrity like you. We appreciate the support of the Swiss police, but it'd be better if you'd remain seated and keep an eye on things. But, monsieur, surely I can be of assistance, somehow. I saw a safe being loaded. We have everything under control. If you'll excuse me, I'll be in the first freight car at the back of the train for the rest of the trip. I'm not here to enjoy the beautiful scenery. I... I am a good observer, and I have finely honed powers of deduction. Thanks to that? I watched the people on the platform in Zurich. I know, for example, that that man over there is a violinist. <laughs> that would be more impressive if there weren't a violin case next to him. And I believe that the gentleman in the next carriage is a German doctor on his way to Italy to take up a new position. <laughs> and what gives you that idea? There's the rod of Asclepius engraved on his cufflink. And he's carrying a German-Italian dictionary. Maybe he's just taking a holiday in Italy, following in Goethe's footsteps. Too much luggage. And no, he's not retiring to Italy either. The suitcases are too shabby for me to believe that he can afford to retire in his late fifties. All right then, Constable... Zellner. Constable Zellner. If you're such a clever fellow, what am I doing on this train? I think you're looking for someone. You're just guessing. If I were looking for someone, I wouldn't spend the trip cooped up in a freight car, now would I? Well, that would seem to indicate that you're guarding something. Then what might it be? Could it possibly be a jewel that's making a long and perilous journey? You're guessing. You can't possibly know what's inside the safe. But if that were the case, then I'd ask you why the train wasn't crawling with police. It's... it's a trap. <laughs> You've got a vivid imagination. I'll give you that. Well, that is impressive, I admit. But the fewer people involved, the better. We'll get along fine without you. You won't. Won't? Pardonnez-moi. I can help. And I will help. You are in my country, and I have been ordered to assist you. And that's exactly what I'll do, whether you like it or not. Hmm. Clever and stubborn. Your commitment speaks volumes, Zelna. But this is my show, and I don't need you. Bon voyage. But how do you know? Ah. <sighs> 
Oh, hello. You cheated. I did what? I saw you talking to the German doctor on the platform. He told you everything himself, and you were just pretending to put two and two together. And what of it? Do you know who that is? That's Inspector Nicholas Legrand. You have to impress him if you want to work with him. I'm going to tell on you. You'd really tell on me? To the very policeman who shot your dear Raven? Whoa! It was him? Mm-hmm. Hunted and killed Europe's most famous burglar. That's how he got his start. I won't tell him a thing. I wouldn't either. All right, Matthew. I have to do my work now. Everyone calls me Matt. Well, except for my mom. She calls me Maddie, as if I were a little kid. Whether Legrand wants my help or not, I'll keep my eyes open. Maybe I can change his mind. All right. This is the first car. The coal tender should be directly beyond this door, and in front of it, the engine. The large map shows the different routes of the Orient Express. This train began in Paris and ends in Istanbul, as usual. Unfortunately, it will make most of its journey without me. The violinist is a good-looking fellow, and he's traveling through the most beautiful mountain landscape in the world. But one can only hope that his violin is better tuned than he. Hello, sir. Hello. If I'm not mistaken, you're a violinist. That's true. A wonderful instrument. The violin music touches the soul. That's why I learned to play it. Do you play in an orchestra? No, orchestras aren't really part of my world. A solo violinist. The best soloists travel a great deal and make a pile of money, or so they say. In that case, I'm probably not one of the best. Of course. What I really wanted to ask is, did you notice anything unusual on the train? Anything unusual? Persons acting suspiciously, for instance. For heaven's sake, is there cause for concern? Everything is in order, sir. We Swiss are just very cautious people. I understand. No, I didn't notice anything. Are you traveling to Istanbul non-stop? No. I'll transfer in Venice, to a ship. I'm on my way to Cairo. Cairo? I'm performing at a reception in the Egyptian Museum there. Have a good trip. Thank you. We Swiss are crazy about trains. We don't just have a lot of railroads. We have the most beautiful ones in the world. Would you be so kind as to close the window? I don't want to sit in the draft. Oh, pardon me. Very kind of you. Thanks. Oh, oh! Pardon me! 
No, no, no problem. The uniform is waterproof. Uh, Mr. Lucio. Professor Edgar Lucio. Oh, a professor. Are you a scientist? Do you teach at the Sorbonne? No, I work at the British Museum in London. You don't say. So, you were, shall we say, an eyewitness to the burglary two days ago? No, I wouldn't say that. Oh, no? Well, there was a lot of commotion, but I didn't really pay much attention to it. There was a break-in in in your museum, and it didn't concern you? Well, let's just say that nothing that's happened in the last 2,000 years concerns me. (laughs) Whatever you say. The famous Inspector Legrand is on this train. I imagine you know him. Uh, no. Should I? You don't know him? And you also don't know what he's doing here? No. (laughs) Why should I? Just a thought. You're a representative of the British Museum. There's a guarded safe on the train. I'm sorry. I don't know what you're trying to imply. And now, please excuse me. May I ask where you are going? Of course. To Venice. I'm going to meet some colleagues there. Oh, Venice. A beautiful city, or so I'm told. Indeed. But I really have to take my leave now. Just one more thing. Did you notice anything unusual on the train? Here? On the train? No. I can't say that I have. Although I did spend most of the time in my compartment. I don't want to take up any more of your valuable time. But you do understand, don't you, that what concerns me is the present. And especially the robbery at the museum. Of course, of course. It's just... I'm in rather a hurry. You'll get in touch if you notice anything unusual, won't you, Professor? Of course, Constable. What's this? What's the matter, sir? The door. I can't open it. Ah. We'll sort it out somehow. The compartment is locked. But I didn't lock it. I don't even have a key. I asked the steward. He was going to bring me one, but he never came back. Someone locked it. Find the steward. He needs to bring me the key immediately. Calm down, Professor. I'll see what I can do. You don't understand. I have to get back in my compartment. All right, just wait here. You can easily lock the compartment door from inside by turning a little knob. But I didn't lock it. Professor, if you had locked the door from in there, you wouldn't be out here. Uh, that's true. I don't believe that... (laughs) It's no use. The bolt is too short to get a good grip on it. The little label on the door reads Baroness von Trebitz. Blue blood on the Orient Express. Yes, what is it? Whoever that is, James, ask them whether they found my purse and then closed the door. The noise on this train is driving me crazy. You're missing a purse. Was it stolen? At the very least, I cannot find it, sir. It was stolen. When did you... When was the last time the Baroness saw her purse? What? In Zurich, on the platform, sir. I just asked where you last saw your purse. In Zurich on the platform. James, tell him that I still had it when I got out to stretch my legs. The Baroness says... Maybe you lost it there. What? The Baroness never loses anything, sir. I never lose anything. Very well, then. I shall be on the lookout for your purse. If I might ask you a few questions about your fellow passengers. I thought he was looking for my purse. James, tell him to look for my purse. The Baroness wishes that you search for her purse. 
But couldn't we perhaps... <sighs> All right. First, the purse. I... <sighs> I will have a look around. Thank you, sir. I don't believe it. I never thought I'd ever meet you. Uh, pardon me, but uh, we'd prefer... It's all right, Miss Miller. I'd like to speak to the inspector. Unfortunately, just a constable, Lady Westmacott. I'm reading The Vicarage in the Mirror right now, for the fifth time at least. That's nice, Constable... Uh, Zellner. Anton Jakob Zellner. This is my companion, Miss Miller. A pleasure. May I ask what you're doing here? Are you on holiday? Holiday? Yes, so to speak. The first and last holiday of my life. Madam? I've been writing since I was a little girl. It became my job, and now I've stopped. So, this must be a holiday. You quit writing? Impossible. I have all of your books. Your Detective Partout is my favorite character. Then I have bad news for you. I killed the old wretch off years ago. I... I don't understand. I'd rather not discuss my work, Constable. Oh, well, fine. Are you traveling to Istanbul, Lady Westmacott? No. We are on our way to Venice. From there we will take a ship to Cairo. As you may know, I have a penchant for archaeology. I fund a few excavations in Egypt. I travel to Egypt by ship as a young woman. And now I'm doing it again as an old woman. I see. As a writer, you must be very observant, am I right? I mean, you have to study the behavior of people around you to create the characters in your novels, don't you? I solved the mystery of human nature a long time ago, Mr. Zellner. Since then, most people just bore me. Really? I had the impression you were eyeing me suspiciously as I came in. What do you want to know, Constable? Did you notice the man who just walked into the next carriage with a cup of tea? I did. He seemed nervous. He was waiting at the bar for the steward, and since the steward never appeared, he elected to help himself. He took two biscuits. He seems pretty young but he's already a professor at the British Museum. Interesting. I'll have to talk to him later. Just out of courtesy, of course. Of course. Did you notice the blonde man with the violin case? <laughs> I certainly did. He introduced himself and tried to make a good impression. People like him are drawn to wealth and fame, like moths to a flame. But his charms failed on you. I know him by name. David Kreutzer. He was a drain on my friend's purse. Do you think he has a money problem? People like him always have a money problem. No matter how much you give them, they always spend twice as much and complain that they have far too little. Did you notice anyone else? What about the doctor or the baroness? I notice that you've asked me about everyone except for the inspector who went in the direction of the freight car a few minutes ago. Isn't that the Frenchman who made his name when he caught the raven? I wouldn't quite say caught. Well, shot. Why don't you ask me about him and my theory about what he's doing here? I don't think we should discuss Inspector Legrand's investigation in public. Legrand, right. That was his name. Will he save the day again? Or will you? Constable. There's something else. A passenger's purse has gone missing. I suppose you haven't seen it. I'm sorry, Constable Zellner. As you know, I only deal with murder, not burglary. Have you asked my boy yet? Maddie is good at finding things. I'll go and do that now. As much as I like to keep talking, duty calls. You were right. Madam? I did observe you as you came in. You seem so... eager. I... It's been a long time since I've had a chance to prove myself, madam. And this is it. Your chance. I do hope so. Then grab it. 
Even small people can make big changes, as my friend Ronald likes to say. I shall do my best. An extraordinary woman, talented, intellectual, extremely rich, and the most successful writer of all time. Yet, they say she can be difficult on occasion, and that she's rather unhappy. Mrs. Miller made a good impression. She wanted to protect Lady Westmacott from me, a pushy admirer. Very diligent, but she does seem a little nervous and tense. I imagine she has her work cut out for her with Matt, and a difficult bus from what they say. Uh, Mrs. Miller? Yes? The little boy, Matt, he's your son? Oh, yes. Has he done something? No, no. I've already met him. Clever little fellow. We always call him Professor because he's so precocious. If only someone could just drive the mischief out of him. Did you notice anything unusual on the train? Oh, I'm afraid not. I was totally focused on my work. She's always got an awful lot to do, my Mary. You have to tell me if that's not all right with you. Good Lord, child. Knit as much as you want. So, nothing out of the ordinary? No, Constable. Goodbye, Mrs. Miller. Goodbye, Constable. I think it's uncomfortable for her when I talk to her in front of Lady Westmacott. She seems to take it as an inappropriate distraction from her work, although she's just knitting. Taking up a craft like that is typical of women who were told as little girls that idleness is a sin. The ladder leads up to the roof. It will be suicidal to climb up there while the train is at full speed. The wind, tunnels... No, I'll stay down here. Hmm, a box with a padlock. I suppose it contains tools for the train's crew, maybe for coupling and uncoupling the cars. At any rate, it's positioned so that it's easier to reach from the ground than from up here. Locked. Bang! Bang! Uh -huh. Don't move! Matt, have you gone mad? I'll shoot! Hey, my pistol! You'll get it back in Venice. I could have fallen under the wheels. I thought you were a ghost. Ghosts don't exist. They do too. One just flew past the window. Yes, yes, sure. Now get moving. Oh, um. I strongly suspect that the door is locked. No, it's open. Hello? Wow. Don't move a muscle, you feathered fiend. Put the gun down, Robert. If I may introduce Constable Robert Oliver from the Yard. And this is the revered Constable Zellner of the Swiss police, who obviously couldn't control his curiosity. Then I was right. You really do want to lure someone into a trap. That's none of your business. Perhaps that someone recently struck in London. And how would I bait my trap then? With something inside the safe? <laughs> Someone hasn't done his homework. 
I hope you'll acknowledge that I, as a Swiss policeman, can undertake investigations in my own country. Are we still in Switzerland? I could be your eyes on the train, as long as you're here in the freight car. Oh, really? There is a certain Professor Lucien on the train. He's an archaeologist from London. And what's his story? Well, it seems someone locked him out of his compartment. Locked him out? Well, yes. The door is locked and he's standing outside without a key. Was it locked from inside? It may have been. Hmm. Do you think the locked door could be important? Professor Lucien plays an important role in this story. Well then, Constable Zellner, be my eyes and ears on the train and see that Professor Lucien gets back into his compartment. Report back to me when you're through. My pleasure, Monsieur. And then there's the Baroness. She's missing her purse. Baroness von Trebitz? Interesting. Indeed, sir. But it has nothing to do with our case. So I shouldn't concern myself with the matter. Ah, uh, why not? It's your job as a policeman. But don't expect me to be particularly interested in a lost purse. What do you know of this Raven's heir? He tried to blow me up. Robert, we don't know who we're dealing with yet. In any event, the new Raven is a more dangerous man than the old one. How do you know it's a man? It could just as easily be a woman. Or several men. And anyway, how do you know that it's a new raven? Monsieur? Never mind. I go attend to the door now. Good. And Constable Zellner? Yes? Don't bother us, unless you have something new to report. Of course. A thief might get anxious if there's too much activity in the freight car. Exactement. Knock twice. Then we'll know that it's you. Understood. An investigation on behalf of Legrand that takes me one step closer. If I can convince him of my competence, I might even be able to see this case through to the end. Mmm, butterscotch. I've loved them since I was a child. Their only drawback, they don't play nice with false teeth. Mmm. Maybe if I just suck it. Ah, uh, Mr. Zelda. <laughs> right, right. How can I help you? Tell me, did you notice anything suspicious here on the train or in Zurich? You mean, except for the fact that my suitcase was stolen on the platform? No. Is there any reason to be concerned? No, just routine. Constable Zellner, please don't think I'm naive. I spotted the inspector from Interpol. Legarde is his name, if I recall correctly. Legrand. If you say so. At the train station in Zurich, he put a cash box into the safe, and then kept close watch as it was loaded onto the train. Don't tell me that a man at his pay grade routinely tramps across the Alps just to keep an eye on cash boxes. A cash box? Like the ones you'd find in safe deposit boxes? Precisely. And I believe we both have a good idea just what's inside. I do indeed have a theory, but... What's yours? A ruby was stolen in London. One of the legendary Eyes of the Sphinx. The second jewel, an emerald, is rumored to be in a Swiss bank vault, if I remember correctly. Both jewels were supposed to be exhibited together in Cairo for the first time in 50 years. It does make one wonder. Indeed. Any news about the robbery in London? Quite something, wasn't it? It must have been professionals. The way they disabled one of the best security systems in the world. Most impressive. People were injured. Well, 
One cannot execute a robbery of that scale without uh, you know, collateral damage. It seems like the Raven has finally found a worthy successor. We can look forward to new and spectacular coups. I'm afraid I won't enjoy his exploits this time around if the new Raven is so reckless. That's your prerogative. May I borrow your newspaper? You can take the section with the article on the burglary. You're interested in that bit, aren't you? <laughs> you caught me out. Here you go. Dankeschön. There's something else. Do you know where the conductor is? Hmm. I'd like to know that myself. I told him to search for my missing suitcase in Zurich. He hasn't got back to me yet. He's probably in cahoots with the thieves and didn't bother getting back on the train. If we don't crack down on vermin like them, the rabble will rule the world one day. Well, at the moment, we still don't know what really happened. He is not here doing his job. That's bad enough. I meant to ask, the Baroness is missing her purse. A Baroness? This train is really full of the creme de la creme. The Queen of Crime is over there, and now a Baroness as well. Have you seen the purse? Unfortunately, no. Do you know Lady Westmacott? You were talking to her. Well, I'm an admirer of her work. Like so many others. I once read in the newspaper that only Shakespeare and the Bible sell more copies than her crime novels. I read that too. She must be filthy rich. As a doctor, I'd have to work a thousand years to earn that kind of money. Auf Wiedersehen, Dr. Gebhardt. Goodbye, Constable. It was a pleasant chat, really. I suppose the steward won't object to me having a look around in his absence. The pad on which the steward writes orders, empty. Maybe he didn't use it because there's not much to do today. I don't need the pad, but the pencil might come in handy. The steward probably uses the scissors on hard-to-open packages. These days, nearly everything is sealed up tight. A colleague recently told me about dry powdered soup in small bags. I couldn't believe it. I'll leave the scissors here. If I need them, I know where to find them. Perhaps he keeps the compartment keys in there. Locked. The lock is so cheap that I could easily pick it. If I want to impress Legrand, I should probably just do it. He's famous for his unconventional methods. I need a bit of wire or something like that to pick the lock. A shortwave radio. It's amazing how small these things have become in the last 10 years. I scratch the pencils lead with the scissors, I get fine graphite powder. I won't get a Nobel Prize for the idea, but graphite powder will bring out fingerprints at a pinch. Yes, ma'am. Uh, my son didn't make any trouble for you, I hope. It's just that he just walked past us, silent and seething. That's usually a sign that someone's laid down the law. I'm afraid so. He played a trick on me, a rather dangerous one. The lad left me no choice but to take away his wooden pistol as a punishment. I understand. And thank you. 
Maddie is a very lively child. Sometimes he needs a strong fatherly hand. Where is Matt's father, if I may ask? He's... he's gone. Ah, I understand. Could you, uh, leave Maddie's pistol here, perhaps? So you don't have to bother with it? Of course. I told him he wouldn't get it back until Venice. Very well. Thank you again, Constable. The steward must have forgotten the toothpicks. Normally he would offer them discreetly after dinner. Hello, Matt. Oh, come on. Are you going to be angry with me for the rest of the trip? Until I get my pistol back. I gave it to your mother. Oh, man. Couldn't you have just raked me over the coals? Would you have learned anything from that? I didn't learn anything from this, either. Do you like a butterscotch? You think you can bribe me? I have no reason to. You made trouble and got punished for it. Take it as a peace offering. Just four? If I'm faster than you, there'll only be three. Hey! Friends again? Mm-hmm. All right, then. And no dangerous nonsense anymore. Your mother is Lady Westmacott's companion, correct? Yeah, but it's not like you think. At first I thought, boy, you must be really wicked if you need to pay for friends. But the lady's really okay. A bit odd and really old. But other than that, she's great. She likes me. The lady has peculiar taste. Hey! You and your mother, do you both live on Lady Westmacott's estate? I'm only there for the holidays. Most of the time I'm at boarding school. I imagine that's not very pleasant. No, it's fine. I have friends there. You always have to be so quiet in the lady's house. And I'm not allowed to bring any friends. Such a big house with so many places to hide. And no one to play hide and seek with. You said it. And how long has your mother worked for the lady? Two years. And your father? What does he do? He stayed home. I used to go fishing with him, and hunting. He even let me shoot a real gun. And then? Then Mom fought with him, and he left. I was seven. Oh, and uh, how old are you now? In eight months, I'll be nine years old. And do you already know what you want to be when you grow up? A burglar? <laughs> no, we'll see, maybe an actor. Really? Well, I don't know. You need a lot of talent for that. I'm an actor in a theater group, you know? You are? Oh, yes. And I'm one of the best in our group, if I may say so. I get really deep into my roles, you know? I don't just talk like the character. I think like him. I become him. It's the only way to... <coughs> Matt, are you okay? <coughs> I think you just have to be good at copying things to be an actor. That... that wasn't bad. Disturbing, but not bad. The Baroness in the second compartment over there is missing her purse. Do you have any idea where it could be? <laughs> Do I ever? Hmm? That guy over there with the violin case? What about him? He picked up something in Zurich and put it in his violin case. Really? Yeah, and he made sure that nobody saw him. But you saw him? Uh-huh. Did you also see what it was? Nah, not really. But now that I think of it, it must have been the Baroness's purse. I should look into it, shouldn't I? I 
think so. Tell me, have you seen the steward anywhere? Hmm, no. He was walking around a little while ago, though. Hopefully they didn't forget him in Zurich. <laughs> What's he supposed to do? I'm looking for a key to open a compartment door. Did you check his things behind the counter? I'm sure the drawers will be locked. Can't you break it open? Or pick the lock like the raven? Perhaps. But I need a piece of wire or something like that. Ask my mom. She has a lot of hair pins. She doesn't like the wind messing up her hair. Hmm. Thanks for the tip. So long. So longer. The violin case looks pretty old. But that doesn't say anything about the quality of the violin. The best violins are often in the oldest cases. I doubt the violinist will let me have a look in his case. Excuse me, sir. A passenger is missing her purse. Perhaps it was stolen. Really? Someone saw you with your violin case on the platform in Zurich. What's the meaning of this? I didn't steal anything. Nobody said you did. I just wanted to ask you whether you might have noticed anything on the platform. Ah, well... Why did you think I was accusing you? Well, I thought, uh, because you mentioned my violin case in the context of the purse. Apropos, may I have a look at your violin? It must be a very extraordinary piece. Oh, that's, uh, that's not possible. It's a genuine Guarneri. Very valuable. Very, and also very sensitive. What could harm it here? Light? Air? May I ask you to open the violin case? No, you may not. I'm not guilty of anything. I'm afraid I have to insist. Then I'm afraid you need a warrant. I will not stand back and let you rifle through my belongings. Have a good trip. Thank you. Should... should I ask for an autograph? That will be quite unprofessional, but on the other hand... Lady Westmacott. Yes. I uh, was wondering if you might sign your book, Constable Zelda. If it isn't too much of an inconvenience. Of course, it's an inconvenience, but only a small one. You are welcome. Thank you so very much. Mrs. Miller? Yes? Uh, please excuse my unusual request, but Matt said you have some hairpins. Could I borrow one? One of my hairpins? It's a long story. It would be a big help. Well, if you really need one. Go ahead, Mary. The constable won't do it any harm. Will you, Mr. Zellner? Of course not, madam. Is this one okay? It'll do nicely, madam. How very kind of you. Goodbye, Mrs. Miller. Goodbye, Constable. And suddenly... It's me who's the thief on the train. Whoops. That was easier than expected. Hmm. Batteries, a toothbrush, a shaving brush. But not the key to the compartment door. Just this one. Hmm. 
Too small for the door, but it might still be useful. to a padlock. I'm sure of that. I bet I could really get a grip on the bolt with these. Well, come on then, hurry up. Hello? I barely left the window ajar. Uh, nothing to see. Ah. Are you okay? Hmm? Yes. Fine. Do you have any idea why the door was locked? I don't know. Uh, maybe the constant vibrations caused the lock to lock itself. You can't possibly believe that. Well, then what's your theory? The conductor could have locked it from the outside. On the other hand, it could have been someone here in the compartment who locked the door from the inside. Who? And where have they gone? They could have climbed out there. Who would be that insane? You tell me, Professor. So, what are you hiding in your bag? What do you have that would be worth stealing? No, nothing. No valuables? Certainly not. <laughs> not on my salary. It was enough for a first-class compartment on a luxury train. That's... my business. You're playing a dangerous game, Professor Lucien. I like to look around a bit. Of course. What are you doing? I'm trying to make what I suspect are fingerprints visible. <laughs> and? Found anything? Unfortunately, no. There are only a couple of fingerprints on the window. It was probably clean before departure, but the prints I can see look like glove marks. Well, wouldn't you expect that? What professional burglar wouldn't wear gloves? Which makes me wonder what a professional burglar would hope to find in your compartment. I... don't have anything to say to that. I thought as much. It was worth a try. What's this? What do you have there? It's a button. From a suit or a uniform, I guess. The burglar might have lost it. Maybe, or maybe not. If I notice anyone with a missing button on his jacket, I'll ask him about it. But I wouldn't get my hopes up. If there was a burglar, he climbed out the window and jumped off the train. Goodbye, Professor. Goodbye.
What are you doing? Didn't I make myself clear? The window stays closed. You're not alone on this train. I want the window open. Swiss politeness doesn't seem to be what it used to be. I'm not going to catch a cold because of you. Go somewhere else if you don't like it. That makes no sense. The violin... The tip of the toothpick is stuck between the window and the runner. Superiors. I don't know anything about violins. It may very well be a very expensive violin, or not. Well. That's not what you expect to find in a violin case. An old one, but probably still fully functional. Hey, what are you doing there? I was taking your case for safekeeping, since it was left here unattended. When I picked it up, the cover unlatched. I never leave my violin unattended. Ah. Then no one else could have put this purse in your case. Um, someone must have snuck it in, like you. Aha, uh -huh, for sure. And you have a pistol in the case because... I don't owe you an explanation. It's mine. I have a gun license. Now, take the damned purse to the Baroness and leave me in peace. Just get lost. It won't be that easy. I'll report the incident to the Italian authorities in Venice. Hey, Matt. The violinist really did steal the purse. Well observed. I knew it! I bet he's got more stuff planned. I'll stay here and keep an eye on him secretly, okay? Sounds like a plan. Pardon me, sir. We could have used you a few minutes ago. Thank you for your hairpin, Mrs. Miller. It really got me out of a jam. Oh, really? That's good to hear. And thank you for bringing it back to me. Not everybody would have. I'm a Swiss policeman, madam. I couldn't do otherwise even if I tried. Inspector, did you find the Baroness's purse? I did indeed. You did? Out of my way, James. Oh, wonderful. Tremendous work, Inspector. Constable, Baroness. Constable Anton Jakob Zellner at your service. May I ask you where this beautiful train is taking you? <laughs> to the madhouse, I'm afraid. One is close to the brink of insanity with this constant shaking and rattling. Have you ever tried flying, Baroness? Do you know how little luggage one is permitted upon an aeroplane? It defies all reason and good taste. Have you heard about the burglary at the British Museum? Heard about it? I'm directly affected by it. How so? I'm in charge of the Friends of the British Museum. 
And for your information, I'm financing the exhibition. Exhibition? What exhibition? The exhibition in Cairo. <laughs> Where did you think we were going? The eyes of the Sphinx were supposed to be exhibited together for the first time in decades. Now that one of them is gone, the exhibition will be rather less sensational than we'd hoped. On the other hand, there's a chance that all the uproar will generate more attention, and that the exhibition will still be a great success. <laughs> Perhaps. But we wanted to show them both together. That was the whole point. Can you tell me anything about your fellow passengers, Baroness? No, not really. I could hardly care who's penned up in here with me. Oh, no, no, no. Wait a minute. Lucien is here, the professor. Poor fellow. The eye of the Sphinx that was stolen belonged to his collection. Professor Lucien is an Egyptologist. <laughs> but of course. As director of the Egyptian department of the British Museum, he has to be. The whole burglary thing really upset him. Director Thomas told me he was a nervous wreck. I'll take my leave of you now, Baroness, and I do hope your journey becomes more bearable. Ha! Yes, indeed, Inspector. Constable. James? I'd better let him read his newspaper if I don't have any pressing questions. I made the acquaintance of Dr. Gebhardt on the platform in Zurich. I don't think the Baroness has any more information for me. And she's not the most pleasant conversationalist either. The train covers a distance of many cities. The butler, this James, seems to have escaped the Baroness. Good day to you, sir. Can I be of any assistance, sir? I wanted to ask you a few questions. Where did you and the Baroness board the train? In Paris, sir. The Baroness was there on behalf of a charity that she supported for many years. So you weren't in London when they broke into the British Museum? We may have been, actually. We left for Dover bright and early the morning after the burglary. But it was in Paris when we first heard of it. The morning paper in London didn't mention the unfortunate event, sir. And just two days later, you're on a train bound for Switzerland. The Baroness certainly gets around. Indeed, sir. We are practically always on the go. What can you tell me about the Baroness? Nothing, sir. A butler does not tattle. If you'll pardon a rather odd question, are you really named James? That would be a lucky coincidence in your line of work. My name, sir, is Clive Alfred Inch. Your second name is Alfred, yet the Baroness calls you James. Madam considers James to be the only forename suited to a butler, sir. Isn't... Butler, an odd choice of career. Butler. Many would say it's a strange job. It is true that I am one of a dying breed, sir. The war claimed a generation of butlers. Have you been to war as well? Indeed, sir. I was a groom for a cavalry officer. When you British talk about war, one is never sure which war you mean. It seems the situation hasn't changed much since the Thirty Years' War, has it? 
Shrapnel from a bomb dropped by a Fokker would not have wounded me in the Thirty Years' War, sir. No, of course not. Goodbye, James. Or Alfred. Someone broke off the radio's antenna. This could be a long trip to Istanbul. Inspector Legrand, anything to report? Baroness von Trebitz told me about her missing purse. Baroness von Trebitz? She is financing everything, isn't she? Indeed, sir. I found the purse. David Kreutzer, a violinist from Austria, had it. Hmm, probably nothing to do with our case. All the same, good work. I got Professor Lucien into his compartment using a pair of pliers. Did you notice anything inside the compartment? The window was open. Someone could have climbed out. And the professor? Acted suspiciously. He rummaged around in his leather bag. And? He seemed to have found what he was searching for. Good. Good work. Now, perhaps you could give me some information. We should. What? The light's gone out. Flashlights. Ah, get off me. There, sir. An envelope. My dear Nico, you should take a closer look at the box. Ah, what the dickens? It's, it's a... Away with it! Get cover! Is everyone all right? Are you hurt? Quick thinking. Well done, Zellner. <coughs> I think the tunnel collapsed. Then he's trapped. Hurry, we have to lock the second exit. Sir, there's a fire up ahead. The engine's burning. It's a distraction. Hurry, block the exit! But, sir... <coughs> the fire will consume all the oxygen. He's right, Inspector. A fire in a narrow tunnel is extremely dangerous. Merde! Go to the front of the train, find the engineer, and tell him to move the train out of the tunnel. Yes, sir. Are you ready? You have to uncouple the freight car, you understand? <coughs> I understand. I'll see to the passengers. They should all wait in the tunnel. We'll check each one in turn as they go out. Let's get to it.
The inspector's trap failed. The thief must have got wind of it. Mm, worse than that, he turned the tables. To win a game of cat and mouse, you have to know who is the cat and who is the mouse. It's still quite warm and too warped to open. Hello? My God, what a fire. I hope Constable Oliver can at least reach the engine. A lot was damaged by the sudden stop, but the bowl was thick enough to survive the fall. The last of the candy has vanished. Measured against the exploding freight car, I think the railway will overlook the loss. Champagne, the finest. Maybe we'll open a bottle if we get out of the tunnel alive. Until then, though, it's no use to me. Carling Black Label, a British beer. No good. Insufficient alcohol content. For practical purposes, I mean, not for drinking. Whiskey, scotch, rum, liqueurs. Enough to entertain everyone on the train all the way from Paris to Istanbul. Hmm, high proof rum. Could be useful. <gasps> oh, pardon me. I did not mean to scare you. What are you doing here, Doctor? Legrand asked me to check whether there are any passengers left on the train. Really? No one is here, except for me and you. Excellent. Then I will continue searching at the front. Did anyone act suspiciously before the explosion? Did anyone leave the seat, for example? I was the only one on the train who wasn't seated when the freight car exploded. Thank God. Otherwise, I would have been caught by the blast as well. You certainly were lucky. Perhaps I was. What happened over there? The inspector said something about gas canisters that exploded. He didn't want to scare you. The truth is, it was a bomb meant to kill him and the Bobby. My God. An attack? But who would... The investigations are ongoing, but first we have to get the burning train out of the tunnel. Oh, of course. How are the passengers? They are in a state of shock, of course. The blackout and the sudden stop were frightening enough, but then the explosion, the dust, everyone rushed for the exits. I was helping the American woman bring Lady Westmacott to safety. They are waiting outside in the tunnel. One entrance is blocked by a fire, and the other one seems to have collapsed. Continue to search the train. I'll decouple the buried freight car. All right. Doctor, can you give me a few matches? Oh, certainly. Thanks. I'll meet you outside. Do hurry. The chair either fell over thanks to the sudden stop, or an escaping passenger knocked it over. 
warning to get off the train as quickly as possible after a sudden stop and a massive tremor. That's understandable. I noticed the extinguisher earlier doesn't match the decor. I suppose that the railway company had to comply with safety regulations at the cost of aesthetics. It'd be useless against the fire out there, and it's too cumbersome to carry around. At best, I can use it here. <coughs> All right, let's go. Rum from Austria. Believe it or not, it's 80% alcohol by volume. There's no way anyone would drink it straight. That should do it. That should do it. Alcohol burns with a dim blue flame. It doesn't shed enough light and will probably burn out in a few seconds. Won't solve my lack of light. I'll have to try something else. That should do it. I can't really say the fabric was eager to soak up the rum. I, on the other hand, soaked up enough in my fingers to smell like a drunk. The wheels came off the track during the explosion. Even if it were possible to pull the car out of the rubble, you wouldn't get far with it. I'm sure I could uncouple the car if I only had enough light to see what I'm doing. Okay, I'll smear some grease on the curtain. Burning match. Hmm. Just as I expected, the alcohol burns with an almost invisible flame.
The temperature at the tip of the flames from the alcohol should be high enough to set fire to the oil and grease on the curtain, and thus the curtain as well. But if it works, I better not be holding it in my bare hands. I'm the god of fire. That's better now. A lever on a pressure sleeve running along a thread. Aha! I can uncouple it with this lever. Okay. <clears throat> there we go. Time to get out of here. Listen, everybody! Listen! <laughs> Robert, what's the situation? <laughs> yeah, I couldn't find the engineer, so I got in the driver's car myself and released the brake. <laughs> All right. Good job. You too. Listen, please! Matty! Where's Matt? Where's my son? Relax, madame. I'm sure... <laughs> Matt, where are you? Oh. Damn, that makes things extremely complicated. I suppose this handbag belongs to Miss Miller, Matt's mother. Lady Westmacott's bag is probably smaller and more expensive. Aha! Hey, there you are. What were you thinking? Bah. Come out of there. Is he gone? Is who gone? The man! What are you doing on the train anyway? Why didn't you wait in the tunnel with the other passengers? I... I wanted to get my pistol. Your pistol? If there's so many cops and thieves and explosions and everything, then I need a pistol too. Makes sense. W what about this man? There was a man. He was coughing. One of the passengers? I think he came down from the roof. All right. First, I'll stop the train, and then we'll have a chat, okay? You want to come out? Hmm. Good idea. You stay put. situation isn't that desperate.
large, soft towel, very comfortable. I'll wrap it around my neck to keep my hands free. The tanks don't seem to be damaged. The water is still running. It's soaking up the cold water. <sighs> Professor Lucien's suitcase. Unlike the leather bag, he left it behind when he fled the train with the other passengers. I don't think there's anything interesting in it. Whatever the professor is hiding from me, it's in his leather bag. Emergency brake doesn't work. I'll have to try something else. <sighs> Here goes. Ouch! Hot! An access for emergencies. If this isn't an emergency, I don't know what is. the hard way. I bought it second hand last week. I like it. A new one must have replaced it. Hell could hardly be worse. It looks just like the one on the freight car. That means that first I have to turn that thing there. That keeps it under tension.
That should do the trick. That's not just smoke. I can actually taste lumps of ash. It's time for my deputy sheriff's story. I uncoupled the locomotive at full speed. Not bad, eh? Do you think we'll get in trouble? Because of the locomotive? I don't think so. It was pretty old already. Come out so we can have a chat. I checked the entire train. There's no one on it except for us. What an adventure. Oh, yeah. Tell me, what did you see on the train? <sighs> well, it was like this. I wanted to get my pistol. And then? When the guy was gone, I got up and banged on the window. I wanted to get out of there. But then I thought, what if the guy can hear me from the next car? So... I got scared, and I hit again. You did well. Are you sure it was a man? Yeah, very sure. What else could he be? A woman? Heh, <laughs> no. Girls can't be thieves. Girls are always honest. <laughs> if only you knew. Did you recognize the man? Have you met him before? I don't think so. Would you recognize him if you saw him again? No. It was very dark and I was hiding. Was he a tall man or a short man? Just a man. I think he was a bad man. Why do you think that? He was sneaking around, even though everybody else was outside in the tunnel. Maybe he just wanted to get his wooden pistol. Ah, oh, man. The envelope that the man lost, where is it? I thought it might be important. I think we should have a look. Hmm. Some cash. An Italian passport. Blank. Very interesting. And here, a ticket for... for... For the cruise! What? The tickets we have for the big ship from Venice to Cairo look exactly the same. Interesting. May I keep it? What do you want to do with it? Take a vacation. It's evidence. And my chance to go with you. The ticket and everything else in the envelope are part of my investigation. And you have no part to play in Cairo. If I hadn't given you the envelope, you'd have no proof that the Raven's heir would be on the ship. Ugh. The ship is his next chance to steal the eye. And he won't give up until he has it. And that's precisely why you should let me come along. No. I deserve to come along. <sighs> what you did was extraordinary. Far more than anyone could have a right to expect from you. And you still want to leave me behind? 
You met our foe and barely escaped with your life. You may not be that lucky next time. It wasn't luck. You can return to Switzerland with your head held high. Enjoy your triumph. I have not achieved anything yet. The fiend tried to kill us and he's still at large. What else did you find out in the tunnel? Not much. After we came out of the tunnel, Robert and I questioned the passengers. Which didn't turn up anything new. No. The engineer and the fireman were missing. They were found a few kilometers back on the track. Both claimed to have been overwhelmed by a shadow and thrown off the train. But you don't believe that. I'm checking their stories. One of them may have been paid to eliminate the other one. How could the Raven's heir have found out about the trap? How was he able to put the dynamite in the box and place the letter? The dynamite was probably already in the box when I put it in the safe. I didn't check it. You had no reason to do so. It wasn't my only mistake. I knew someone was on the roof of the freight car, but I let myself be distracted by that damned letter. How did you know? Too late. I should have reacted instantly. I'm coming with you. Full stop. The thief was able to place ten sticks of dynamite in a cash box right under my nose. For all we know, you could already be sitting on the next bomb. You cannot come. But, Inspector... We're here. Inspector Legrand, an urgent telegram from Paris. Bad news? It's about the unfortunate events on the train. I'm to return to Paris and explain myself. But sir, what about the eye? They want to inform the Egyptian authorities that there might be a burglary attempt. Might? Egyptian authorities? What if the jewel is stolen at sea? I know, I know. I never received it. Keep a close watch on the loading of the eye, Robert. Aye, sir. It was a pleasure meeting you, Constable Zellner. What is the Constable's problem with me? <laughs> I think he's jealous. Scotland Yard assigned him to assist me, just as you were sent by the Swiss authorities. Uh, with the distinction that he may go to Egypt. Robert is to accompany me at all times. Your mission was restricted to Switzerland. At this moment, I want to be sent back to Switzerland just as much as you want to be sent back to Paris. I know, but I'm walking on thin ice, and I can't carry you too. And the second eye is in that safe? Yes, an emerald. It's been kept in a bank in Zurich since the start of the war. I personally took it out of the bank vault and Professor Lucien certified that it was the real thing. And while a fake jewel was sent by train... The real one was brought here in an armored car. How is it protected? You can only open the safe if you have three special keys. Professor Lucien has one and Baroness Van Trebitz, who's paying for all this, has the second. The third was sent by air courier to Dr. Abbas Mokhtar, the director of the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. So, not even you could possibly open the safe before it arrives in Egypt. That's correct. We don't want to make it too easy for potential thieves. Commendable. I hope you're aware of the fact that you're risking your career. Indeed I am. Why do you care so much about this case? Someone pretends to be the Raven and you promptly risk your career? What if he's not just pretending? What do you mean by that? It's his handwriting. And there's only one person who ever called me Nico. Have you ever considered the possibility that I shot the wrong man? But wh what do you mean by that? Let us assume just for a moment that the person I shot and who fell from the roof was not the Raven. Who would have cared enough to uncover the truth? 
the chief of police, the politicians. No, they wanted to revel in a successful manhunt. And it was the best thing that could have happened to the Raven. The search for him was over. <laughs> he had no reason to fear me anymore. I had so many medals afterwards that he could hear them jingling kilometers away. And now he's back? And you're the only one who can stop him? Does that sound probable to you? The feathers, the letters, Nico. No one outside the police force knew that the Raven used to call me that in his letters. Policemen gossip, and there are plenty of forgers. You can't seriously intend to stake your reputation on such weak evidence. My reputation rests on something that I probably did not do. I have to find out who's behind all this. Let's review. One of the two most valuable jewels in the world was stolen. Obviously, the second one will be next. And you suspect a legendary burglar who's been dead for five years. Go on. The second jewel is about to be put on board over there, in a safe that requires three keys. Our thief may already have the first key, the archaeologist's key, from the train. We don't know anything about the status of the second key, which was meant to be air freighted to Cairo. We have to assume that he already has it. Therefore, there's just one key left. The Baroness's. Correct. So, you'll need my eyes on board. Look, you can keep your eyes open for me here on the wharf. I'd be most grateful. But when this ship sets sail, you will not, I repeat, not be on board. But, Inspector... We're dealing with a dangerous man. And I will pursue him regardless of the consequences. I won't let you get mixed up in this affair. It's still my decision. No, it's not. It's mine. And I've already made it. Good day, Constable Zellner. <laughs>